Uh, I, I get this question a lot, which is, do I have any advice for young people today? And uh, yeah, I, I kind of do. Um, so there's a problem in the world, and there's a lot of problems in the world. But one of the big problems is that people are growing up today, and one day they'll wake up when they're 18, and the world says, okay, go live your life. And they're like, I don't know what to do. And they look at themselves, okay, what am I working with? Let's see, I've got the physique of a marshmallow. My only skills are staring at screens for extended periods of time and pushing buttons really fast with my thumbs. And I'm really good at feeling entitled to everything I don't deserve. This doesn't equate to much of a life. So a lot of people at that point start to look for who to blame. And I'm speaking largely from experience in this. Now, I wasn't a worst case scenario because I did sports when I was younger, so I was physically in good shape. And I realized what was going on when I was still pretty young. So I kind of climbed out of the hole quite a while ago. <clears throat> However, I don't think it matters when you climb out, the, climb out of the hole or how deep the hole is. I think the solution is the same. Okay, first, let's go through the first step. You got to figure out what happened. Who's to blame? Is there, any, is there anything useful in that information? Okay, let's go back to World, world War I and Two. These vague historical events that don't have any effect on our lives today, right? Uh, these aren't the only factors that, uh, you know, affected childhood today. However, there are two major ones. So two generations in a row this happened to. War starts. They need men to go fight the war. So all the fathers and husbands go to the war. Now I'm generalizing. Obviously not all of them. But I don't, don't want to say that every time I say something. So I am generalizing in this whole video. So all the fathers and and husbands go off to war. Some of them die. Some of them are just destroyed on the inside. After years of watching their, their best friend's head be blown off and getting covered with brains. This sounds ridiculous and almost humorous, but the reality is just horrific. And going through this for years just destroys people. So meanwhile, back at home, the moms are taking care of the kids. They're holding down the fort till those those men can get back and they can put their families back together. And then the war machine comes along and says, hey ladies, we need you to work in the factories. And the ladies say, what are you talking about? I've got my kids here. If I'm gone, they don't have anyone. We... And the government says, oh, all right, let's refine our message. All right, ladies, we want to get your families back together. So let's bring those boys home. Let's bring those boys home. Now to do that, we need you to go to the factories and make more bullets and more tanks and stuff. And the faster you can do that, the faster we can get those boys home. Come on, ladies, you can do it. And so a lot of women are like, okay, I, I just got to do whatever we can do to just get this over with and, and get, our, get our husbands back and our, and our fathers for our children. So they go to the factories. And not all the women go to the factories. And uh, one of the major problems here is that women who went to the factories started looking down on the women who didn't go to the factories. Because just, just put yourself in that position. You've gone to the factory. You're, you don't get to see your kids anymore. You're going through all these sacrifices. And here's this other woman just hanging out with her kids, just being a mom. Well, I'm, I'm here doing all this work to bring your husband back. I don't get to see my kids. Why do you get to see your kids? And the shaming, the massive shaming of, of mothers comes along. And this, this exists today. Because women will look at each other and if, if some woman is, is just a mother, they'll say, oh, you're just a mother? That's it? You're, you're just a housewife? Uh, like, that's an unimportant job. And it happens to, to dads, too. Like, generally, the idea that you are a parent is, is not important. It's not important to raise children anymore. It's, it's just considered this, this unimportant kind of side thing. Where, but in reality, it is the most important thing a human being can do is raise the next generation to be good people, to be, to be excellent. <clears throat> so two generations, parenting is destroyed. So now you've got kids growing up, and they have kids, and they don't know what to do because they didn't have parents, and their parents didn't even have parents. They, they can't even go to their grandparents and say, hey, Grandpa, how, how do I be a dad? What do I do? Because Grandpa doesn't know either. No one knows how to be a parent anymore. Now, today people don't realize how big a problem this is. 
um, <clears throat> they just think, well, I mean, kids will just grow up and be fine, right? I don't need to, to guide them or anything. Okay, here's, here's what happens today. People are expected to live their lives, and somewhere toward the end of their life, they're, they're supposed to kind of realize what's important in life. Meanwhile, they've lived their entire life doing unimportant, stupid things, because they didn't know what to do. And then at the end of their life, they realize what was important, look back and say, ah, crap, I blew it. Parents are supposed to teach you. They're supposed to help you learn, help you figure out what is important in life so that you can actually live that, not just figure it out when you're about to die. <clears throat> but instead, parents are like, I don't know what to do. And all these parents from the, or the dads from the wars came back and these moms came back from, from the factories and found these kids they didn't recognize anymore because they'd been, they'd been getting raised by public schools. The government was like, we'll take care of your children, which is, you know, the doctrine of... Uh, uh, communism, which is supposedly what we're fighting. Uh, it's funny how the government always does the exact opposite of what they say. Whatever. So what do they do? What do these non-parents now do with their children? They just try to get them out of the way. Just, just go do something. And now we've got all this technology. So it's super easy to plop your kid down in front of a screen and say, just, just go watch that. I don't know what to do with you. Just go watch that. Here's a tablet. Here's a phone. Just blah, 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 blah. And it's incredible, like one-year-olds are like, like this is their life. Instead of learning how to do, like the, the massive amount of stuff you need to learn in the first few years is, is just disappearing because it's becoming this. Uh. All right, so you grow up basically having no guidance, no parents, no idea what you're supposed to do. You have, you've done all the right stuff. You've done what you were told to do. You went and sat in front of the screen. You went to the government school. You, you did all the stuff you were supposed to do. And now you're in this position where you have the physique of a marshmallow. You're useless. You can't do anything. You don't know what you should do. It's just like the whole thing is a big pile of crap. Not your fault. And everyone is pointing fingers at you saying, oh, it's just you millennials ruining the world. Well, the thing is, before it was you millennials, it was Generation X or whatever. And then it was the baby boomers. This has been going on for a long time. Uh, <clears throat> so there's not much you can do in terms of getting compensation from the people who started this. They're mostly all dead. But what can you, what can you gain from understanding how this happened? A few things. One, the government's not going to take care of you or your children. Two, all those screens telling you things are not telling you the right things. And if you think about it for a few seconds, you realize parents are going to tell you things that will help you have a better life. What is the screen going to tell you? That's not your parents telling you. That's people who are trying to sell you stuff. All the screens are telling you that's what, that what is important in life is the big screen TV, the new phone, the car with the fancy readout, all this junk that doesn't actually make you happy, doesn't make your life better, just, just, just stuff that just doesn't matter. So how do you, how do you turn this around? <clears throat> well, you need to get rid of all the things in your life that got you to this position where you woke up one day and realized it wasn't going well. Get rid of the phone, get rid of the TV, get rid of the tablet, get rid of the internet. Oh, but I use some of this stuff for work. Okay, then use it at work. But I need my phone. Are you? If you're not on call 24 hours a day, you don't need your phone with you all the time. Leave your phone in the car, leave your phone at work. Oh, but I have to charge it at my house. No, you don't. You can charge it at work probably. There's probably plenty of things you can do to just get this stuff out of your out of your free time. And this is what you're gonna find you have a lot of. Once you get rid of all that electronic garbage, you're gonna find that you have a lot of free time. And don't go back to that electronic garbage until you get some perspective and figure out how to use it to benefit your life instead of having it suck the life out of you. So just get rid of it for years if you have to, whatever. It's probably gonna take years. And this is going to be the hardest thing to do because you're going to be addicted to that stuff at this point, which is why you just have to make it go away. Don't turn it off. You need to actually sell your TV or even throw it in the garbage would be better than, than just having it, you know, in a corner turned off because one day you're going to be like, well, let me just turn it on for a minute. No, you just got to get rid of all that stuff. Get rid of the booze, the drugs, get rid of all the stuff that distracts you from life.
<clears throat> you know what? If you have a room in your house or apartment or whatever, clear it out of stuff. Fine, you need a bed. Okay, fine. You don't need anything else in there. Now, the reason you do this is to get rid of all the stuff that's, that's gotten you to where you are. You need to reset your life. So you need to reset everything around you. Now, with all this free time you're going to suddenly have, because you're not spending all your time doing this, go into this room <clears throat> and don't do anything. Just go sit on the floor, whatever. And sit there and just wait a few minutes. Probably you won't have to wait that long. Probably within seconds, you're going to start feeling like, I need to do something. I need something to do. I can't just sit here. I need something to do. Now, this is lesson number one. You know all those years of people telling you you're so unmotivated? You're so unmotivated and lazy. You have no internal drive. Where is this coming from? Where is this drive? I need to do something. Well, it's always been there. You've always been motivated. It's just your motivation has always been sucked away by these machines. So you turn on the TV and say, ah, now I'm doing something because you're living vicariously. Except you're not actually doing anything. So to the outside observer, that's why they think you're lazy and you're unmotivated because you're just sitting there. Or you're texting on your phone. Oh, now I'm talking to people. Except you're not really talking to anyone. You're just jamming your thumbs up and down. So that's why you get rid of all that stuff. Now you're sitting there and you feel like, I'm so, I'm, I'm so anxious, I need to do something. You've got all this motivation welling up inside you. Now is when you need to direct it. <clears throat> First thing you do, cut off all the, all the directions that it should not go. So make yourself one rule, which is you won't do anything that takes you backwards. Now you could say, oh, well, well, if I, if I smoke a joint, I mean, that's not bad for me. I mean, that's just government propaganda saying it's bad for me, right? Okay. Okay, so go ahead. Smoke your joint. Smoke, and uh, an hour later, you're exactly right back, right back where you were. Except now, you've used some resources, and you're an hour older. You've gone backwards. Forget the beer, the joints, the, all that stuff that just distracts you from real life. What you're going to end up with is you're going to be sitting there just trying to figure out something you can do after all the stuff you've been doing has been all those doors are shut now it's just like oh i gotta find something so you're probably gonna go for a walk outside it's like okay if i go for a walk outside i'll get some fresh air a little bit of exercise there's nothing bad about that right that will be in some way beneficial okay fine so you go for a walk outside for the first time like maybe ever and the whole time you're probably thinking, oh, when's this going to be over? Uh, uh. Now, a few days, maybe a few weeks into doing this, one day your brain is just going to give up on trying to get you to go back to all that other stuff. This is how you break habits. When your brain is telling you to go do something, if you keep not doing it, your brain eventually gets tired of saying do it, and it just gives up on that. It's like, all right, fine, we're not doing that. And at that point, you're going to see this blue sky. And you're going to see the grass and the trees and you're going to see people and you're going to see that there's a real world in front of you and it's going to be a life-changing experience and as soon as you realize it there's a good chance you're going to snap back into ah, ah what's going on <clears throat> but then it's going to happen again and again and it's going to start feeling normal to actually experience the world around you not the one in here the one out there <clears throat> And then, as long as you keep not going to that old stuff you used to do, you're going to get motivated to do more and more things. You're going to feel like, oh, I just need to talk to someone. I need to talk to someone. You used to just go like this. Oh, text, text, text. Or text, 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 or whatever. Now you can't do that. So what do you do? Oh, well, there's this girl I see at the park every day when I go for these walks. I guess I could say hi to her. And you walk past her and say, hi. Ah! And it's weird and crazy and feels insane. And you have this all kinds of weird feelings. And you don't know what's going on. That's life. That is life. That's the stuff. And you're going to find that as you do this more and more, you're going to have these highs and lows, that you, like joy and agony that were unimaginable. 
because that's one of the things all these devices do is they take away the risk of the risk of agony but they also take away the joy they just make it so nothing happens <clears throat> so you know what say hi to that girl say hi to another girl eventually one of them's not going to say go take a hike go off one of them's going to say hi back and maybe you'll become friends with her and maybe you'll start dating <gasps> and then she's going to break up with you and you're going to feel like the world ends it's okay it's okay to feel that way just feel it experience it realize oh this is life this is what life is oh my i feel like i'm gonna die and i can't sleep and you know what a few days later it's gonna subside and you're gonna start feeling good again and you're gonna, you're gonna actually start feeling really good just out of comparison to that way you felt a few for a few days you're gonna start feeling good and you're just gonna start talking to some other girls and eventually something's gonna work out and uh, you're gonna start interacting with the world maybe you'll get some hobbies start exercising one of the things you should really really do that's super important is exercise take care of your physical self because so much matters that uh, <clears throat> so, so much of your physical self matters in everything you do if you're not healthy if your body's not healthy you can't think straight you can't you can't interact with the world you can't do stuff. take care of your body eat well and exercise so at this point I don't know I don't know what to tell you you're kind of on the right direction just stick with it but to get to that point you're gonna have to break the withdrawal to all of this stuff no one's gonna come help you no one's gonna save you you got dealt a crappy hand in life and it sucks you should have had parents who who knew how to be parents they should have had parents who knew how to be parents but you know what it didn't happen it sucks it's not your fault but you can do something about it and you're the only one who can do something about it so don't give up on yourself you can get somewhere and when things get difficult and scary don't give up just keep trying <sighs> all right maybe I just put you in a difficult position because maybe my videos or someone else's videos online are the only inspiration the only guidance you have to improve your life and I just told you to turn all that off okay this is when you start getting creative here's an idea <clears throat> a couple times a week go to some cafe down the street or whatever take your computer with you and your headphones watch watch whatever video inspires you and then go home where you don't have the internet again now while you're at the cafe maybe you'll start talking to some people maybe some some cute girl's gonna come by and say oh what are you watching and you can start getting into a conversation where you say oh well you know I'm trying to improve my life so you know blah 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 I've kind of gotten rid of a lot of the distractions in my life and she'll say oh wow that's very that's very admirable maybe I should do that too and then you can start doing it together <gasps> oh and in case you missed this the most important thing you can do today if you have kids or if you're going to have kids is be a parent figure out struggle through figure out do whatever you have to do to break the cycle of no parents and start creating that's how that's how we turn the world around and start getting back to a more positive path